Hi, I'm Ward from River City Events. Thank you so much for renting from us. Your video projection package is very simple to set up and we'll take you through it step by step to make sure you get the desired results. When you get your video data kit from River City Events, it comes with six elements. It comes with a silver carrying case. It comes with an instruction guide, the projector, the projector's power cable, the short HDMI video cable for connecting your source to the projector, and it comes with the projector remote. After you've unpacked your projector from the case that it comes in, there are two cables you're gonna to need to connect to it. The first one is the power cable. This is a standard power cable often used in computers and can only go into the hole one way. Make sure it's seated firmly, push all the way in, and you're good to go. Second cable is for your source, your video source or your data source, laptop or whatever you're coming from, and it can only go in one way as well. It's keyed, it has a profile that only allows it to go into the input one way. There are two inputs on our projectors. There's HDMI 1 and HDMI 2. Either one can be used, although I do recommend you use HDMI 1. Get the, the profile of the plug in the correct direction, plug it in, and you're done. Next step is to take the HDMI cable that we plugged into the projector and plug it into your source, what you're going to be playing back or what you're going to be feeding into the projector. It's important to note that it, the source that you're using must have an HDMI uh, output, such as this particular laptop has an HDMI output. To turn it on, there's the on-off button on top of the projector. It's pretty simple, push down, and let go. You won't hear anything immediately, but shortly you'll hear the fan kick on. And it'll continue on as the projector bulb comes up to temperature and brightness. It'll take a few minutes, so if you're not seeing anything immediately on the screen, uh, don't panic, it's coming. After it gets up to the right brightness, you can now adjust both your focus and how big the picture is from these two controls here. So you want to set the size of your picture with the zoom first. Once you've got it to where you want it, you'll want to adjust the focus so that it's sharp with this next wheel here. You want to make sure your projector is at the right height and is level. This can be accomplished with two ways. At the front of the projector is a foot, an adjustable foot, that you can take and simply thread outwards and it will raise the projector on the screen. At the side of the projector is another foot, same thing that you screw out, that'll adjust the levelness of the projector on the screen. So that'll t adjust any tilt that's on there. There may be a few other buttons on top of the projector that we need to know about. The most common one you're gonna to go to is the menu button. When you press the menu button, an on-screen menu will come up and it'll give you a number of options in terms of display and settings and systems and uh, uh, information. You probably won't have to use this very often. Most of the default settings are perfect for your application. To make the menu go away, simply press menu again and it will go away. The button you're likely to use the most is the source button and it switches which input the projector is looking at. Now, as you recall, on the front of the projector here, we set up an HDMI input on HDMI 1. There's also an HDMI 2, and there is a VGA, an S-Video, and a video input. Most of these are pretty much obsolete now. Very seldom used. HDMI, by far, is the most common use. To change your source on this button up here, simply press the source button, an on-screen menu will appear again. You can select whichever input you need. If you had another HDMI input, a second, second source of some sort, you can go to HDMI 2, and by selecting OK, the projector will switch over to the second input. Now, when you first turn the projector on, if you only have one input, as we do here, the projector will automatically find that input for you. The projector has the capability to play back audio to, to a very small audience, maybe six or eight people at most. Um, the audio can come into the projector through the HDMI cable that is also carrying our video from our source. To control the volume of the audio, on the top on the mouse pad, the left and right buttons are also the volume up and volume down. For your convenience, a remote comes with the projector. The green is the on button, the red is the off button. Across the top here are your source buttons, either directly to HDMI, 
through the source button like we talked about that is on top of the projector or the PC is the VGA input, seldom used nowadays. Here's your cursor controls and the OK and a number of convenience features down below including volume up and volume down as well as a freeze button that'll allow you to freeze a pane and disconnect your projector from there. After you're done with your projector for the day, we ask that you turn it off uh, before you unplug it. You have two ways of turning it off. You can turn it off by hitting the red button on the remote or by pushing the on off button on the projector. Now you have to, both of them, you have to push twice. First one will bring up a menu that says, do you really want to power off? And by pushing it again, it'll turn the projector off. You will note the projector fan continues to run, cooling the bulb. Please do not move the projector until the fan is turned off as it'll cool the bulb down and ensure no damage happens. Well, I promised it would be easy to set up and operate. Hopefully I lived up to my promise. Thank you so much for renting from River City Events. I'm Ward, have a good day.